she says there is, and some wonderful information about wine. And uh, she has mesquite smoked oysters and brown butter oysters. These are her recipes. She also has uh, fried green tomatoes. We talk about the Gulf Coast Immigration Company that got people down here. These are great Christmas presents. And all the money goes to benefit the, um, the History Center. And we've sold about 400. We have original art. Um, in fact, if you want to buy one from Japan, it's 70 bucks. So I can save you 20 <laughs> oh my God. But uh, there's stuff here about the Swords of Store, which is now, you know it as the Stell Stairs Gallery. It started as a ship channel. But anyway, it goes on back through grocery stores and then restaurants. How many of you know the Duck Inn restaurant? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a recipe in here from that. And uh, so we get a bunch of, of uh, the restaurants. Very small, so it's a, a real here's the same hotel because they have remember the waterfall and the restaurant. Yeah, they show your family. And we tried to include as much as we could in in our in the printing. And then we have the food festival, Sea Fair, and then we also have a map of all the historical markers in town in this area. Somebody had our county, and it's a really cool book. So my family's from here. Country. We also have, uh, Carla donated these. These are Early Memories of PLA Girl by Pat Krieger, and they're only $5. And if she shows up, she can sign them for you. And then we have the membership. You can be a member of the History Center for only $35 a year, unless you would like to pay more. Yes. <laughs> and the applications are there at the door, so you can pick one up as you leave. And also, if you want to know the history of the house, there's a little pamphlet by the back door, or by the door as well. So, I think we can start. Yeah, I think we can go on and start. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Um, in two weeks, we're going to have the last program of this series on Key Allegro. It's going to be on shelves. And um, Bridget Bergen and uh, Carla Renchi are going to be here to present the program. Uh, it's not going to be just on shelves alone. It's going to be also how, how the shelves were actually formed. So it should be a real good program. And then on the 7th of December, we're going to um, start our holiday exhibit, and it should be extremely good. I know Maureen Winkleman has been working on it already for a couple of months, putting it together. So uh, uh, please come out on the 7th, too, for that, uh, for that opening. Um, and, uh, but no, but no series goes for that. No series. It's going to run through, oh, I think the um, uh, first week in, uh, in January. And then after that, the next program that we're going to have is going to be on Hispanic heritage, which should be a, a good program. That program yeah, will run into the, uh, uh, into the spring. And then the following program after that, we're going to have program is going to be on uh, women of Aransas County. So uh, those, are, those are the programs that are going to be coming up. We haven't decided on the third program yet, so um, uh, we'll probably be deciding that uh, on Tuesday evening. But the program today, we have uh, Gordon Stanley and uh, uh, here today, and he's going to tell stories that we have never heard before. <laughs> 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 and he made him and, uh, and be Nikki, careful, Gordon. <laughs> Nikki is going to assist and, uh, and uh, chime in when necessary. No, he, yeah, well, I'm going to push this, and he's just going to tell stories. We're going to wing this, okay? Yes. There's been no rehearsal. So and those are the best that. types of programs <laughs> we've had so far. They've been the ones that we've uh, just uh, uh, won. So we're going to start. This is a this is a program that Carla and I did about the development construction, but we're going to use that as something for uh, Gordon to just talk from. And if y'all have anything to add, please feel free. We're cool. Anyway, um, why am I doing this? All right, my dad worked with Carl uh, to construct. He didn't develop it; he constructed it. You can all see that. And you can tell me about that in a minute. Okay. All right. Here we go. This photo uh, was 
was taken by me in August of 1960. I arrived here with the U.S. Air Force in August of 1960. We had a radar site out here at the uh, airport. Uh, there were about four or five hundred airmen and officers. Uh, we were watching the Gulf of Mexico because if you remember in 1960, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis was occurring, um, and our mission was to watch the Gulf of Mexico for any Cuban or Russian fighters that would be coming our way and identify them, and if they were hostile, do appropriate things. Um, this is how I discovered Rockport. Um, our mission had some other interesting facets to it. <coughs> uh, in Del Rio, Texas, there was another air base. Um, that air base was an experimental aircraft being tested called the U-2. Um, the U-2 was a very high altitude reconnaissance aircraft and we were uh, over flying Cuba to see what exactly was going on and uh, so we were involved in that program also. Uh, so this photo I took, I love Prado's Island. Uh, we liked to go floundering there and it was a good, uh, just a good beach to go shelling and the bird watching was fun. I saw George Taggart last night at the restaurant and he said he and Dana used to go out there and court. <laughs> the days and uh, that sort of neat. Uh, anyway, um, after uh, uh, in August of 1961 I had orders to leave Rockport and go to scenic Southeast Asia. And uh, so I left in September of 61, and if any of you remember what happened here in September of 1961, called Hurricane Carmen. And uh, so I got out and just in the nick of time went over to <coughs> Southeast Asia and uh, did my thing, uh, came back, and uh, to Rockport to be a best man at one of my uh, friend's weddings. We tend to, when the Air Force comes to town or any military, sometimes the folks find mates. And uh, uh, several of my friends found mates. Uh, but I arrived back in 1963 in February, and the first thing I heard was some, uh, I was I said, what's happening out there on, on Prominent's Island? And they said, well, some fool from San Antonio bought it, <laughs> and he's going to develop it. And nobody could seem to understand that, why somebody would do that. Well, I, soon I, I met the fool, and uh, he became a very good friend. Yes, Before you sir. leave that picture, any idea who built that original bridge, and when, and why? Uh, I'm guessing the Navigation District built it, uh, and I'm guessing uh, this sign said, Yield Rustic Bridge. <laughs> and also, this sign that said, please do not pet our rattlesnakes. Oh, and there were plenty of them out there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm guessing that the Navigation District built that. So anyway, that's sort of how I arrived um, and got involved in the boat business and soon found out that the boat business and land development uh, can work together. And uh, the 
the, the interesting facet of the story is how Carl and I could work together. He would sell a lot. He'd call me and say, go on, I just sold Mr. Smith a lot. He certainly needs a boat. And uh, <laughs> I had a friend in the office that also helped. And uh, Carl's secretary, and uh, who I uh, married. And uh, so uh, it, it was a wonderful partnership. I'll get into some other stories as we move along. Okay, so this is, if you were here before, this is what Fondly looked like when Kate Carl Kruger bought it. It's a little different. Right, it looks like that now. Okay, so you want to talk about that? The units? The, or Carl developed, uh, obviously you don't do a project like this. Uh, in one fell swoop. Uh, Carl did it in units, um, and Chuck Vermillion, uh, and the, the story of Chuck and Carl's relationship is wonderful because there never was a contract. It was all uh, a handshake, which is just a wonderful story in itself, the trust of the, the two guys. and. Uh, uh, I remember uh, going out there and seeing uh, Chuck laying out the uh, the bulkheads. What he did, uh, he would. I got him just in there. Get there. Yeah, there should be a picture. Yeah, I I think I can see some right there. Okay, all right, go back. Yeah, that's where I was trying to go. Okay, uh, Chuck would pour these concrete slabs and uh, on the after he got the uh, the channels dug and uh, they cured and then uh, he had his uh, drag line uh, take the um, slab put it down then he had a jet pump that he'd and uh, a nozzle would stick down and jet out where that uh, uh, slab would go and be held in place. And that was uh, a wonderful process. And I don't think many of those slabs have been replaced to this day. So, you know, that's 50 years ago. And uh, yes, there have been a few, but uh, you have a picture with the, the dead man. Uh, yeah, sort of. Well, yeah. here's one. Here, here's the, the, the uh, cable that would come back, or the steel that would come back to the dead men. And the dead men was, it was just a, some, co some uh, concrete yeah. dug out. Yeah, and uh, th this would be the, the wall, and uh, then a tie rod back to a dead man, and then it was all filled in with dirt. So it was... Uh, it was done the right way. And that's the first, um, that's Albacore Channel. And I use this as a comparison to show the completed wall. You can see how much they built up the, the dirt. You can tell the story about the dirt. And then over here, they just got the slabs and then the, they're forming up the cap here. And they haven't landscaped it there. You want to tell them the story about the extra dirt. So there is a concrete cap on top of the... Uh -huh. and, then, and then cap, yes. And then the dead men are behind that, and then they're hooked onto a reinforced steel beam. And later on, we started uh, encasing those with epoxy so they wouldn't rust. I was going to say, that's what typically fails is those yeah. tiebacks. Right. Um, but th we, we changed that after, when when they caught up with our what we were doing. And that was pretty much the finished product. You want to tell them, go ahead and tell them the story about the extra dirt. When Carl got to Unit 5, uh, that was in what year? 75, 73. So, yeah. Uh, he had all, all of this water work had to be permitted by GLO, General Land Office. And 
if you had excess dirt, it had to go somewhere and there had to be a permit to put it somewhere. And uh, when he got to Unit 5 out here, he had a bunch of extra sand, basically, that he could not get a permit for. And he and I had purchased a six-acre track on Highway 35 from George Taggart, uh, where we put Live Oak State Bank. Uh, which is now Prosperity Bank. And in the back of this six acre tract was a big hole. And I remember one day Carl said, Gosh, Gordon, what are we going to do? I've got a bunch of extra sand here. I've got to put it somewhere. Uh, you got any ideas? I said, Well, Carl, I think we have a big hole in the back of our. <laughs> property behind the bank that uh, might just be a good spot to put that dirt or sand. And he said, well, let me check on that. He checked on it and checked, I think, with Chuck. I said, yeah, yeah, we can put it there. So anyway, the Church of Christ, which is now there, is on Kilergo sand. <laughs> Holy sand. <laughs>
and one of which was Fair Fawcett that he managed to get, and that yeah, may be her. Fair Fawcett was, uh, was that that's, yeah, uh, right yeah. involved in uh, a lot of uh, our uh, yes, and oh, this yeah. is that's some the of the, yeah. the marketing. And I think uh, Kay was in one of them too. <laughs> there's one uh, one of the big signs uh, that. Carl had was how many residents there were, and there's a picture of that sign in one of the brochures. It said, um, I forget the number of residents, but after Kay and I had our first child, uh, there's a picture of me changing the number of residents on that <laughs> sign. <laughs> It, yeah, it's in one of the books I noticed okay. in there. Talk about oh, the Dolphin Show. show. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, that. that was uh, another one of Carl's uh, marketing, and I, I see several pictures. Uh, this is Carla Melinda right there. Um, Carl had this uh, promoter from Florida come over and give him a pitch on, on a dolphin show, and, and so uh, Carl got Buddy McCluster to go catch some dolphins for us and put them down at the end of the canal, and we had a dolphin show. And uh, soon uh, that got, I think, the uh, Pete and Chico, I think, were their names. Um, and uh, he did attract a lot of uh, people, and uh, it uh, was quite an attraction, but soon uh, he decided that uh, it's time for another promotion, and he wanted to get rid of them, and he found a, a guy in Port Aransas, I think his name was Ralph Plumley, uh, and he uh, turned them over to Ralph, and Ralph had his own show over four day. So uh, I think that's uh, the way I recall it. You can read all about it. I see some uh, uh, promotional material here that will probably explain it better than I can. Dolphins are known for jumping pretty good. How do you keep them from jumping over the barrier and getting out? <laughs> I don't know how they did that, but they it, they did. I remember seeing it, and I don't remember it being very high. No, because it was just in a canal, and it was yeah, like I a think wire, like the I think they were country smart wire. dolphins. They knew where the food was coming from. They didn't want to leave. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that Buddy used to catch dolphins for. Sea World? Well, it would be, they, I think it was Marine World in Galveston. And in fact, I talked to Ricky about it to see if they had any, if he had any pictures. But, and until they closed that place down, they had passes to go there because his kids, he had taken his kids there. And he had some photographs of that. I don't know if it's still there or not, but it's gone. It's gone. See a Rama. See a Rama, that's what it was, yeah. But Buddy used to catch the. This is what he had those. I, I put in some joking. Yeah. So the hunting, the, the, yeah, the hunting yeah. lease blinds for men. The back end. Anyway. Anyway. Mm -hmm. the hunting, this according to Carla, and then also guided fishing trips. But they didn't look like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have one. And they used to have um, a good goose lease up by the refuge. I'm sorry. They used to have a goose hunt lease up by the refuge too. Okay. A hay field that had bales of hay and they made blinds out of hay. Okay. Right. Bales of hay. Stuff. Uh, go back to the... I'm sorry. I'm well, that's all right. Uh, or do you have an Islander Club? I was going to get to the Islander Club. Um, it's a, the top left right there. It's this one over here. Yeah, there, this is the Islander Club. That was uh, the uh, local... Uh, our club. We yeah. had lots of uh, social events there. Yeah. I'm guessing that you probably that explained a lot of our no. the, the social events when you did no. your this program. But uh, it, uh, it was a lot of fun. I know uh, 
one of the things that uh, that I did with marine land, I got in the boat racing business, and uh, and once again this was promotional for uh, uh, Glastron. Uh, Glastron had come out with a deep V hull, uh, which was uh, quite uh, an innovation, and. Uh, they wanted to promote this hull configuration. I told them, well, heck, get me, build me a race boat and I'll promote it for you down here. And uh, well, no, they did. And uh, so we, uh, we did <laughs> boat races uh, down here. And uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, my driver, Ray Langley, there's a bunch of our trophies. Uh, and we, we got a lot of good publicity out of it, and we had a lot of fun. And one of the one of our competitors in the racing business was Red Adair, and Red would come down from Houston with his red Cadillac and his race boat and a bevy of uh, beautiful women, and uh, we have. Uh, uh, we race and then we party. Hmm. And uh, but Red had a hydroplane, and if you know anything about boats, a hydroplane is has doesn't dig in; it just slides. So we would my boat would would beat him on the corners because I'd dig in and he'd slide. But on the straightaway, he had more more speed. So uh, we had a lot of fun racing with Red. He was uh, he was fun to party with. And, uh, anyway, then uh, we did a lot of promotions for Glastron with uh, for our race boat and everything. That helped us become one of the largest uh, Glastron dealers in South Texas. Won us trips all over the world. We went to Acapulco. I went to Europe, London, France, Spain, Malaga, uh, but uh, uh, that we we had fun selling. Yeah, we'll fight over that. We did well. Oh, yes. Here's no, Marine. over the still, going to all those boarding, so, going to all those places. Doesn't look as bad. Because it doesn't want to go anymore because he's already been there. Oh, okay. So I have to discuss that in front of oh, Sherry. And Scott. And Sherry said, Dad. That's across from Bolton. That's, yeah, that's across from Sandbox. This is too embarrassing. See, we started the government as well. See, you Marine Land started me. Started so in Quonset, yeah. uh, across from the Rockport Basin in 1958. Uh, it was started by two retired gentlemen. Uh, Pat Green was a retired uh, school superintendent in Rockport, and Homer Dysart, uh, Homer Faber, was uh, with Dysart Pest Control. They were retired, they loved to fish, and uh, so they were good friends. They said, well, let's start a boat business. So in 1958, they started Marine Land. And it was located in the Quonset Hut. They leased from Chester Johnson. And uh, that's where Marine Land started. Well, they right, did well, and uh, soon auto repair. Uh, yes. needed more space. And uh, Jack Sanders had just uh, uh, built Sand Dollar, and he had just done the, uh, the hurricane. He got the contract, the FEMA contract, with uh, New Orleans. Remember after that storm that took out New Orleans in the I think it was 60, 61, 62, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, anyway, he built uh, our facility, and we leased it, uh, Marine Land leased it in 1962. And uh, when I got back from overseas, uh, one of my uh, good friends was Chuck Muslanka. He married. Homer Faber's daughter, and uh, he was scheduled to take over the business, 
and uh, he uh, also uh, loves to fly. And uh, fighter pilots are funny people. They can't stand to be out of the cockpit, so he decided he wanted to go back to flying. And so I bought him out, and I uh, ended up owning Marineland in 1965. Uh, I had started, when I came back, a boat rental company, Coastal Boat Rentals. Uh, I started that in 1963, and I worked with Carl, uh, and we had our boat, rental boats over here at the marina. And uh, that was just an added marketing tool for Carl. We have rental boats available. If you don't have your own boat, um, we, we have boats available. And uh, needless to say, I bought my boats from Marine Land and uh, then ended up uh, uh, owning Marine Land. So, uh, anyway, oh, we did sunfish races on, uh, on Sunday afternoons. Martha Christian uh, did, uh, was in charge of our sunfish. Uh, races. She did a great job, and there's some beautiful women in these pictures. <laughs> Those sun uh, boats continued on into the 80s. My son learned how to sail. Yeah. I started those races when I had one. Right. Yeah. And uh, the first year we did it off the balcony, upstairs yeah. balcony. We um, ran into each other and put it out at the yacht club. <laughs> and uh, then they formed the, thing, the yacht club. And uh, Martha was had her sailboat too, and so they all joined there, and so they took over the races from that point on the next summer. But that first summer getting started was standing up there with a bullhorn. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd get a couple of boats out there setting out the uh, the buoys that yeah. the race around. And I did that first year and then we turned it over to the yacht club. Yeah. I don't know. There was a Polynesian room. That building? Martha Christian? Um, it was in no, the upstairs. Yeah, it was downstairs. It was downstairs. Yeah. Upstairs, okay. And Pat yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 And actually, the restaurant and motel, that was built by Harry Cole. Right. Yeah, Harry they were friends. Yeah. Harry was my father in law until he, when he died. Yeah. Um, Harry owned the Mayflower Hotel. And his brother had the Coronado Courts down, yeah. which the Mayflower was right around him where the federal courthouse is now. And he had known Carl and Pat from San Antonio, because he had a hotel in San Antonio, and they knew each other there. And then they, he and his brother, he was wife and brother, they opened those two at Corpus. Then Carl got him to come over here and build that one. That was back when our tourist season was what two months probably out of the year yeah <laughs> now we have two months out of the year when we don't have to <laughs> I, I don't think you have that much <laughs> yeah i was told that he used to race from corpus christi on sailboats down here all day and then he'd stay in a hotel that night and then they'd go back the next morning yeah that was the big the big boat yeah yeah, the big sailboat. Sailboat. yeah. yeah 30 foot and stuff yeah we, we were just in the little sunfish. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for years, uh, the Rockport to Corpus race was a big thing, wasn't it? It was a big deal. Uh, we had another interesting race. It was a glass tron promotion um, that I was involved with, and that was a water ski race uh, from, we started at, uh, here at, Rockport, and we raced up the intercoastal to Houston on water skis. Oh, wow. And was it a relay race? The skiers were pulled by Blastron boats. Yeah, of course. And the one that I was in charge of, his name was Dick Kemp. Uh, he worked for Blastron for many years. Then he went to Austin and uh, 
built high-rise buildings. A lot of those buildings that you see in Austin were built by Dick Kemp, and uh, he ended up being quite a quite a guy. And I understand he just passed away. So. Was the idea that a single skier would ski all the way up there? Yes. They, yes. They like... Yeah, all the way. He, he skied. How long? I, and How I was the, the watcher. You know, you got to have an observer. How long did it um, You know, we're going 30, 40 miles an hour. It was a good day. He's up the intercoastal. Yeah, up the intercoastal. It takes a lot of muscle to get started by the end of that time. I participated in another race that was a real killer. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the Texas Water Safari. It's the longest, most grueling race in the world, they say. It starts at San Marcos, comes all the way down the Guadalupe River, and uh, it used to go to Corpus. In 1963, I was fool enough with a partner to do that race. And uh, let me tell you, <laughs> but I had just come back from Southeast Asia and I thought I was pretty hot. <laughs> when didn't they think it was? Man, that was a race. You recognize anybody in that picture? Yes, yeah, okay. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kate, okay, you know. You want to say anything about the Marina? Oh, Killer Marina. Yeah, Ken. Carl started uh, that when he started the development, and uh, uh, Ken Leaf came down and uh, um, decided he wanted to go in the marina business, and uh, Carl decided he had enough fun with the marina, so he sold it to Ken, and uh, I believe you were involved uh, in, in that. Uh, you. I think you were the bookkeeper for yeah. for the marina, and uh, so uh, that's uh, the story on the marina. And uh, hopefully it will get built back. I drove by it yesterday, and uh, uh, that's the hard part coming back uh, after a storm is seeing what it's used to be and those memories. I guess that's why I'm in Port Isabel. <laughs> All right, Ricky, what's okay, that? What oh, yes. Oh. That was that from oh, Dallas Times. He had that. Colonel Stroot. He, that. he was an Air Force Colonel, mm -hmm. uh, retired. Chinese. And uh, he, uh, I guess you are uh, he was a good friend of mine, and we would <coughs> uh, get in trouble together. Um, Travis Bailey, um, yeah. <laughs> Travis Bailey's dad built a big sailboat in the boat barn that is just north of Sears in early 60s. The name of the boat was the Argo. <laughs> Great big thing. I just love that boat. But uh, Mr. Bailey uh, built that that boat, and it was in that boat barn, a uh, great big metal building um, that he later sold to uh, Kay Burgle, who uh, had Rockport Steel Form in that building. She manufactured steel forms for. Uh, contractors who are building bridges and this and that and the other. And uh, after a while, she uh, uh, decided it was time to sell that building. And about that time, I think Marineland's lease was about to expire, and I needed a building. And uh, I was prodded by my father in law, it's a good deal, better buy it. So. We did, and uh, moved Marineland down to that building and added on to the building, and uh, that's where Marineland was until I sold it in uh, 1974. Uh, Bob Hughes, yeah, Travis Bailey uh, was the one 
also that we bought our sunfish from. But Bailey, Travis's brother. Oh, Buck, yeah, that's Buck right. Buck was in Corpus and he was in the same family. That's right. And that's where I bought the yeah. others, the sunfish. Thank, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> Sheriff Bob Hughes that next to me? was stationed oh, yeah. with me at the uh -huh. Air Force uh -huh. Base. And uh, he was a provost sergeant and tried to keep some of our airmen out of trouble and did a fairly good job. He also tried to keep some of the officers out of trouble, which he failed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he came back uh, and uh, served as our sheriff. And uh, of course, Pat was uh, 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 very active and in uh, all our promotions and affairs. <clears throat> I don't know what else we have. Okay, that's the, these are the social, social activities. Yeah, probably y'all went over a lot of these mm -hmm. when you did your yeah. talk on the social activities, so uh, I'm not going to... Talk about the Meredith Lawn Art Gallery, though, with both of y'all. Well, uh, <laughs> Meredith Lawn had a gallery in Houston. He was a, a big art dealer in Houston. It's and, still there. And yeah, the, still, uh, there. It's still there. In yeah. Houston. And uh, Carl and Pat both were very into art. They just loved art. And uh, uh, I'll never forget, you know, every time I walked into Carl's house, I mean, you know, it was just wall to wall with wonderful art. And uh, so anyway, uh, Meredith and uh, Carl uh, got together and Carl uh, convinced Meredith that he ought to have an art gallery down here. And uh, uh, Meredith decided he would. And, and uh, so he built it on, uh, on Nassau. In fact, it was just before you got to the Islander Club, oh, yeah. right. Uh, right on that corner. Beautiful location. And uh, had wonderful uh, exhibits there. Uh, we bought art there. Uh, you know, it was it was wonderful, and it's a nice addition uh, to the island. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that helped pull that in was uh, Meredith uh, Long represented Jack Cowley. Right. And Jack was living on the island, and he was one of the most well-known. Uh, yeah. Artist in, in his field, and then he brought in Booth and Al Barnes, yeah. and so he, and then also Dorothy Hood, and folks, all of that will be shown along with Carl Kruger's art collection in our next book <laughs> called <laughs> Rob Ford Art Collection, oh, wow. due in 2020. Oh, oh good. Well, yeah. I know you're working on another book. Yeah. Carl is even doing this. Just something about the issues of Carl. My sister, you know, Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of. Uh, Lots of uh, organizations uh, were helping uh, the community, and uh, <coughs> we had fun doing it, rummage sales and uh, uh, tennis uh, uh, oh, it was quite popular. And I think Kilero brought in a lot of volunteer organizations into Rockport, including castaways. They were, they were active in, uh, in a lot of things like that. Uh, the Women's Club was active in scholarships and one and sale and we had an investment club is still active today but the different owners on the island were all volunteers yes. in, in, in all the different organizations they supported yeah, that Sam's passed away so uh, started by Odyssey after school program was started by uh, people on the island at the time <coughs> our church yes. it started by different things but so what else we have? And we can we can we can ask for questions because I don't know what else we got. Oh, there we go. Questions and comments. <laughs> Y'all have any questions for Gordon? Lots. Lots. <laughs> yeah, but some that he can tell. <laughs> well, I have a comment that we're talking about the companionship of Carl and Gordon right. when he would uh, bring somebody to look at a lot, then he would call Gordon. He would come over. Well, in that. Dallas became quite a marketplace for Key Allegro mm -hmm. as well. And Linda, uh, her dad, and my uncle uh, bought a boat 
from Gordon uh, in Section 5, which was out on that curve. <laughs> which, yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, and then so that thing, you know, we had a lot of family things that came down from Dallas uh, mm -hmm. down here. And uh, so it was, again, that companionship between the boat and the lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I had a quote on here, drive up, walk through the house, and get in your boat, or go out your line. <laughs> that, we found that one in the research. Well, the, the interesting thing to me, uh, in, in addition to how the, the two businesses work together, was, for instance, and I'm going to use uh, our family as an example, uh, one of the first purchasers was Helen and Hugh Thompson from El Campo. Well, very soon, here comes a bunch of other people from El Campo. And same way when John Williamson from Dallas came down, he was the Frito Lay uh, president. Well, here comes a bunch of Dallas, of his friends. So, uh, and and when I was selling, uh, in fact, to this day, when I'm selling, I say your satisfied customers are your best salespeople, and. Carl was right there with that because he did everything he could to make you comfortable here on his island. And boy, the word got out, and you know, uh, people people talk. And uh, if you have good things said about you, you will do well. Uh, oh. And so it's interesting to see know, the, amazing, wasn't it? Room, yeah. the Hancocks came down, uh, a bunch of other El Campo people came down, Dallas came down, Houston, uh, San, lots of San Antonio people because that's where Carl was from. And all his friends came down, of course, the, the original people, uh, Buddy Cadwalder and, and uh, Martin Shipman and all those people that that uh, started with Carl, uh, they all had friends, and boy, they brought them down. And uh, so that's just uh, the, the way uh, the way it goes. And, and uh, Carl, after he finished Key Allegro, he couldn't stand it, and he had to do some more developments. And so, uh, as I think a lot of you are aware or he put partnerships together because he he was smart enough to know that he couldn't do it alone. He needed other minds to help him. And in all of his ventures, he always put a group together. When we did the bank, uh, there was a group of us together. When we did the country club, there was a group of of us together when we did uh, on the moorings uh, in uh, uh, Fort Aranjas, another group, and you know, we, we shared vision, but Carl was a visionary, and uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, as I think back on it, it's, uh, it's amazing, but uh, yeah, it was a success, and I'm glad I was uh, a little bit of a part of it. <laughs> now, every time Carl did a new development, then Vermillion was right there with him. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we did Island Warrens too. So. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Bill. Gordon, you mentioned Jack Sanders uh, at the San, at, uh, San, San Dollar mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Resort. Uh, where is he from and what do you know about his his? He was an NFL football player at one yeah, time. Yeah, he played he in the NFL. Was he out campo? Uh, no. No. I can't remember where he was. I read no. that. He, he played football. He lost his arm. In the, uh, but that, he lost his arm in the war. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, he was in the war, lost his arm. His he son got, married at Hancock. Yes. yes. No, no, you're, okay. Let, let me get you clarified right here. Yeah. Jack, son. Yeah. Uh, married a Hancock. Right. And uh, uh, Jack's other son 
had, I think he had two sons, didn't he? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. One. Two sons. And uh, one of them was Rocky. Yeah. And he yeah. married yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hancock. Uh, yeah, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy, yeah. But uh, Jack uh, built Sand Dollar. And, uh, when was that? When did he build that? It was, um, I was think, built from the ground up. Around 66. I have the article at home. I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess I just did that research for the art column book, so we had that in there because he brought in William Briggle and Wolf Kahn here. I, I didn't <laughs> no, no, no. I, that's a good question. No, we, this is question time. We, th this will jog memories and maybe more stories. <laughs> I can I can remember riding down Fulton Beach Road, those, those cast cement deer that are up there. They've been there since I was a little kid. There wasn't a motel right there. It was just a bluff and those concrete deer up there. Yeah. Was that sand dollar? Sand dollar, yeah. a picture of the old Fulton Beach Road. Nothing but oyster shell. It's when we used to go to the point to go swimming, that was, <laughs> there was a beach at Fulton, but we ride down there to where Tom Tiki is yeah. now and go swimming. Yeah. You mentioned the different cities and towns that turned out as a group. Did they typically buy their lots adjacent to each other, or did they scatter throughout the development? <laughs> uh, okay, would you not say they pretty <laughs> much scattered? Yeah, I would say yeah they were pretty much down. scattered. Uh, you want to talk, Kay, you want to talk about this? I know you've already done it once, but why not do it again? That was uh, in our main office. I was Carl's first secretary down here. And that was in the main office. And as we sold the lots, we would write the name in. And uh, that gave us the inventory of lots, and we'd color it in, and it was all done by hand. But uh, Nancy's and my mother and dad bought the first house on the island, which was the very first office. It was built as a, there's a picture of it up there, I think, okay. as, a, uh, as a spec house, little, little beach house. It's still standing. It's <laughs> what, it's <laughs> the right hand side. On, uh, no, what, the uh, uh, no, no, it's over here. No, it was just, uh, no, it's uh, Jamaica. 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 Yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. And, uh, and, and the architecture that Carl liked was what I call the tiki. The tiki yeah, would turn up corners over the Turn up Polynesian stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But uh, we uh, then he, he was building this office, which was the one that's always been up there, the PLA were offices, was Luce's office now. And that was the original office office. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so. About two weeks after they bought the house, they were able to move in because they were able to finish that house and move the office over there. And then, but the accounting office was still in San Antonio at that time. Now, did you live here full time, or were you just? Uh, I moved down here in '63, probably. Uh, I was working in Corpus. I'd been in Houston, then I was working in Corpus, and Carl was wanting to move the accounting to Rockport, and uh, he knew I was working for an accounting firm, and uh, he knew I loved Key Allegro and was interested in had the connections. And so he talked to my mother and dad and said, do you think I could ask her? <laughs> and they said, sure. <laughs> and I said yes immediately. Yeah, but, me on the water. but when your mom and dad bought the house, was that a second house? A second house. They were from El Campo. Okay. And uh, dad was retired, and they um, realized that they weren't going back to El Campo. <laughs> so he bought and built his second house on Unit 2. And it's the one that has a, that uh, uh, Casper has that has a tall oak house now. Has a boat. Yeah. He had uh, Chuck, when he was doing Unit 2, cut in a boat stall. Mm -hmm. And then he built his house over that. And that was the first uh, boat stall in there. And he paid for for that part of it uh, himself to have that that done, and uh, so Chuck gave him that. And that's I think there's one more on the island. That, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Uh, Alfred McCartney's. Was Alfred one who did? Yeah. It? yeah that one. But I think that's the only two boat slips on the island that are 
that are, that are built into the bulkhead. Well, they did where, one out where, uh, where uh, the islands are now, the islands are on the port. Just past that where Mobile had a, a Pegasus, it was a Pegasus yeah. Center for years. Mm -hmm. There's a boat shift <coughs> under yeah. there. Yeah. So you did that one too. Or my, Tommy might have done that. But, but they realized they were going back to El Campo and this, they, they came here because they were looking for some place. We'd always grown up in Fort Pilot, but that was too far away from medical yeah. and anything else. But this was close enough to medical and everything they needed, so they found out they lived here. <laughs> and so they did El Campo and that was it. That's good. One aside uh, that uh, you might find humorous. Sometimes this one or one? Uh, Carl would be run a little short of money and uh, let's see our our first house was 32 Riviera right here and the reason we liked it was a drive through drive. Yeah. I could drive in when I came home from work and drive out without having to back up or turn around. <laughs> and so that's where we built our first house in 1965. And it seemed uh, Carl would make the rounds about happy hour on a fairly <laughs> regular basis. And we all uh, consumed uh, adult beverages in those days, and uh, uh, occasionally when he would run a little short, he'd come to our house and we'd get into a discussion, and many times the discussion was a deal, and uh, uh, so we ended up owning uh, not only our first lot where we built the house, but two or three more as he one came. on either side. Yeah, one on either side. And uh, so we uh, we ended up with quite a bit of real estate uh, on Tier Lego and helped Carl out a little bit too. <laughs> and it was a lot cheaper at that point. Oh yeah. We have uh, some... 2,500 bucks. Yeah. Well, the paper we found it had 39 on it, but he might have gone down. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we bought it. Yeah. <laughs> You Daddy. said it was a deal. Exactly. <laughs> right. I don't know what kind of kid to pay Daddy, so he paid him a lot. And then Daddy turned around and sold it. Of course, I didn't feed the children, but you know. <laughs> Y'all have any other questions? This has been delightful. Yeah. You asked me about the engineer, and I did not forget. I looked it up, except I don't remember all of it, but it was Littleton something and Newman. Newman. Okay? I, I didn't forget. You give me your email. I'll look it up again. Any idea where they were from? Mm -hmm. We found the letters in there. Carla has a, I mean, literally a bucket full of stuff. Well, we thank you for coming.